Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson's Hi, and Happy Tuesday. We'll admit it, up front, we can't get off this Martha's Vineyard story because there's just so much there. So last week, you'll recall, our Venezuelan visitors to this country, our brothers and sisters, as they're now known on CNN, took what amounted to the shortest vacation ever recorded to Martha's Vineyard. They were on that island for just hours, less than two full days. It was hardly enough time to pick up a fair trade coffee at Mocha Mott's in Vineyard Haven or go kiteboarding on South Beach. In fact, we have literally been talking about their trip longer than it lasted. It was that brief. On the other hand, so was the moon landing. So was the Wright brothers' first flight at Kitty Hawk. Duration is no measure of effect. Those brief hours our Venezuelan brothers and sisters spent on Martha's Vineyard changed history and left what they're calling an indelible mark on the people who live there. They enriched us, said one resident. We were happy to help them on their journey. Unfortunately, as it turned out, that journey ended abruptly at a military base on Cape Cod, where our Venezuelan brothers and sisters are now being held against their will. Prisoners in a country they thought was their own. There are no mocha mots where they are now. Kiteboarding is completely out of the question. It's just a bitter dream at this point. Now, the people of Martha's Vineyard knew this was going to happen. And yet, none of them thought to tell their Venezuelan brothers and sisters before it happened. Quote, I kept telling them it was like a dormitory, said Jackie Stallings, who lives on the island, as soldiers arrived to deport her Venezuelan siblings. I didn't want to say, you're going to a military base. Well, of course not. It's a dormitory. Just like your dad sent your elderly dog to a farm, because he'll be happier there. But the Venezuelans are not happier in military lockup. They loved Martha's Vineyard. As they told MSNBC, they considered it a paradise. They left here a few minutes ago. They moved to Cape Cod, to the joint base in Cape, Cape Cod, with new clothes, new cell phones, having talked to lawyers for the first time and saying that they were actually brought to paradise. They don't resent it for now, uh, and they know they're the lucky ones. So finally, one reporter over at NBC News tells the truth about what is actually a pretty sad story. Our Venezuelan brothers and sisters came to this country for a better life, and unlike so many, they actually found it. They arrived in one of the prettiest and most affluent destinations on the planet, an idyllic island with unlimited resources and many thousands of empty beds, and best of all, a population that claimed to love them. No person is illegal, read the lawn signs. But it was all a lie. 50 brown people was too many for the people of Martha's Vineyard. They called in the army to have them removed, like trash, as one island resident said. So actually, judging by the behavior, and not simply by their lawn signs, which is the best way to judge people, the people of Martha's Vineyard are not especially compassionate. In fact, they're small-minded and cheap and pretty nasty, as any waiter or babysitter who works on the island can tell you. So once again, the ones who claim to be the best people are actually the worst people. Remember when Jimmy Swagger got busted with hookers and porn? It's very much like that. The truth turns out to be the opposite of what they told you it was. It's highly embarrassing. But here's the weird thing. On Martha's Vineyard, they're not embarrassed at all. Jimmy Swaggart famously apologized for his sins because he had shame. But the people of Martha's Vineyard have no shame. And so they're not apologizing. In fact, against all evidence, they're now bragging about how wonderful they are. Yesterday, Kerry Pickett of the Washington Times caught up with Martha's Vineyard's senior senator. That would be Ms. Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts. Listen to Elizabeth Warren's version of the Martha's Vineyard story. Martha's Vineyard is it getting a bad rap right now. Martha's Vineyard? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Well, I think they did. They, the people of Martha's Vineyard opened their hearts and were helpful mm -hmm. to uh, the migrants who were deceived mm -hmm. and uh, dropped there in a privately chartered jet mm -hmm. and treated like a prop for a governor uh -huh. who's just trying to make news. <laughs> well, if nothing else, it's interesting to see history history that we've watched unfold, a story in which the facts are not at all in dispute, get rewritten in real time. And you wonder how many other stories have been rewritten, but we can see this one being rewritten. In Elizabeth Warren's telling, actually, 
the people of Martha's Vineyard are the heroes and Ron DeSantis is the villain because he deceived them. Now we just heard, and it's again, factually not in dispute, that island residents deceived their Venezuelan siblings by telling them they were just going to a dorm. They're not being locked up on a military base like terrorists. So actually the people of Martha's Vineyard, the residents there are the ones who did the tricking. They tricked the Venezuelans into going to a military base. But that wasn't deception. No, according to Elizabeth Warren, it was an act of love. But at some point, whatever, the people of Martha's Vineyard got what they wanted. Everything is back to normal there. The people who live there are relieved. They're not gonna be 50 needing minorities in their midst to spoil the usual festivities, and that would include the food and wine festival. Each year for the past decade, more than 2,500 food and wine enthusiasts converge on the island of Martha's Vineyard for a culinary and wine extravaganza. So have an oyster, then taste the wine, then have your other oyster and taste the wine again. That's the routine for each one. So two oysters per wine, see how the oyster tastes on its own, see how you like the flavors of, of the wine with the oyster. The Martha's Vineyard Food and Wine Festival. Four days and three nights of celebration. <laughs> So just so you know, you taste the wine and then you eat the oyster and then you taste the wine again, okay? And the way they mesh in your mouth, those flavors, the complexity of them, it's, it's like an explosion on your palate. And that's why thousands of people come to Martha's Vineyard every year for that festival. But guess who doesn't come? Venezuelans. Unless they're serving the oysters and pouring the wine. So really, we could go on at great length about this because it's just such a great story and reveals so much. But it's much bigger than the now established fact that Martha's Vineyard is populated by nasty liberals who don't tip and don't actually want colored people in their midst. That's true. We know that now. But the bigger story and the one that affects the rest of us, the other 340 million people who live here, is that what we saw in Martha's Vineyard is in fact just a taste of what is absolutely the official policy of the Democratic Party. And it is this. If your town votes the right way, then you get military protection. The military shows up immediately, 50 people, not hurting anybody, and the army comes to remove them. Can you imagine? Talk about a 911 call. It's pretty great. All you need to do is vote 80% for Joe Biden, and you can do that and throw some donations this way too. But what about everybody else? Well, everyone else is SOL, and that would include all of us. Over the past 11 months, American authorities have encountered more than 2 million illegals along the southern border. That's the highest number ever recorded by the US government. At least another 1 million were allowed into this country as so-called economic migrants, meaning they want better jobs, because who doesn't want a better job? Hundreds, thousands more, we don't know the, the number, but clearly hundreds of thousands just sneaked in. That's according to the official data. Now, how many of those are headed to military bases for deportation? In how many cases did the U.S. military arrive to solve what is so clearly a disaster? Mm, zero, because it wasn't Martha's Vineyard. Now, we've been making a documentary on this, uh, a documentary on the borders called Battle for the Borders, coming out later this year. And in the course of reporting that out, we obtained this footage showing how some of these illegal aliens enter this country. These pictures were shot on July 23rd this year. How you doing? Everyone. State police. Where are you from? Huh? Back is that. What y'all doing here? Keep your hands out of your pocket. You got any weapons on you? You got an ID? No IDs? No machine gun, machine. Machine gun. So when people on Martha's Vineyard think of illegal immigration, they really think groundskeepers and waiters and people who work at the back end of the kitchen people who clean up or prepare the food. That's what illegal immigration is to them. They're not really thinking, none of us are really thinking that people might be showing up from Pakistan. Really, Pakistan? They didn't walk. 
And by the way, isn't Pakistan the place where ISIS has just called for jihadis to enter the United States and kill Americans? Why are these guys walking along a road in Texas? Now, during their interview with the police, both of the men you just saw admitted they were here illegally. They said they each paid thousands of dollars to be smuggled into the United States. This is very common now. It's not the immigration you remember. Who are these people? Do they mean us harm? It's not simply a matter of competing for jobs with American citizens. It's potentially a grave threat. And a lot of people like this are coming across the border right now. Here's Fox's Bill Malugin. For the very first time, a brand new Fox News drone equipped with thermal imaging captures images of mass illegal crossings in the middle of the night in Eagle Pass, Texas this morning. Migrants could be seen crossing the river and walking onto private property where over 100 gathered and waited for Border Patrol processing. Sometimes the Del Rio sector here gets upwards of 2,000 illegal crossings in a single day and this was only one of three huge groups we have already seen so far this morning and it's not even noon yet out here. Take a look at this second group we saw. This was another group of about 200 who crossed illegally and started walking along a local highway out here. This is how it is in Eagle Pass. You can just be driving down the road and you'll see large groups of several hundred migrants just walking down the highway waiting to be picked up and apprehended by Border Patrol. So we're just getting word right now that the White House, many White House officials are telling, quote, journalists that they are very annoyed by Bill Malugin's reporting. It's, quote, alarmist. In other words, unlike reporters at the Washington Post and the New York Times, Bill Malugin doesn't think that he works for Joe Biden. He's taking pictures of what's actually happening. And that's wrong. What's interesting, given what is happening, which is that we are being invaded by people who have no right to be here for reasons that we don't really understand, is that none of the people who are complaining about Ron DeSantis sending 50 Venezuelans to Martha's Vineyard have said a word about what else is happening on the border. And a lot is happening. It's an ongoing humanitarian disaster, a tragedy for the people being trafficked, and they are being trafficked. But it's also an ongoing disaster for us who live here. It's our country. As Malugin reported, human traffickers are loading more than a dozen people into the backs of cars right now, which is a disaster. Watch this. In Uvalde, Fox News was with Texas DPS troopers as they pulled over a human smuggler from Michigan. Hidden inside his trunk, two illegal immigrants from Honduras, all of them arrested. And in Kinney County, Texas DPS troopers pulled over this van and were shocked when they found 16 illegal immigrants being smuggled in the back. Jesus Christ. So it's a human wave, and that's not an attack on the people coming over here. They are being rewarded by the Biden administration in exchange for breaking our laws, for mocking our Constitution. They're being rewarded with public benefits. So why wouldn't they come? But the volume of this is without precedent in American history. And you have to ask yourself, what does this mean for the country? It's obviously destabilizing, but what does it mean long term for the country? Well, just to give you some perspective on the numbers here. As Neil Monroe at Breitbart has reported, in a given year, roughly three migrants are arriving for every four Americans who are born in this country. Three migrants for every four Americans born. Oh, remember the Great Replacement Theory? Was it a conspiracy theory? It sounds more like a statistical fact, actually. Was there a vote on this? Did we get to vote on this? Do people want this? Democracy, remember that? That's where people vote and get to decide what kind of government they get and what sort of policies that government enacts. No, no, no one voted on this. Nobody wants this. It's happening anyway against the will of the entire country. So what did Biden say about this? Well, here's what he said today. On the border, why is the border more overwhelmed under your watch, Mr. President? Because there are three countries that are never have There are fewer, there are fewer immigrants coming from Central America and from Mexico. This is a totally different circumstance. What's on my watch now is Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua. And the ability to send them back to those states is not rational. You could send them back and have them wait. We're working with Mexico and other countries to see if we can stop the flow. But that's the difference. Well, that's just completely insane, of course. They're coming through Mexico and we control the Mexican economy. We could turn off the Mexican economy in one minute if we wanted to, of course. We're by far their biggest trading partner. 
And so we have an enormous amount of leverage over the Mexican government. And if we said the Mexican government, not one more crosses through your country in two hours, that'd be the end of it. Because no one wants to tangle with the federales. No one takes American law enforcement seriously because they know they're just going to direct you to the local welfare office. Nobody messes with the Mexican federales, period. And everyone knows that. But we're not doing that. What Biden said that is true is that as of this fiscal year, migrants in places other than the Northern Triangle countries in Mexico, specifically Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela, do make up nearly 40% of the total apprehensions at the border as of last month. That's a 175% jump from last year. What Biden didn't say, of course, is that it's all his fault. He's solely responsible for this. He stopped deporting asylum seekers, and he's allowing asylum seekers with fraudulent claims to remain in this country. And of course, the message is going out to the world. Just show up and you'll be fine. So let's say you wanted to harm the United States. What would you do? Well, what did Fidel Castro do in 1980 with the Mariel boat lift? He opened his prisons and mental hospitals and sent them to Miami, thereby changing Miami forever. Venezuela is doing something very similar. Venezuela is opening its prisons and sending them here. Breitbart reports tonight that DHS is warning border officials to be on the lookout for Venezuelan convicts entering the country. DHS indicates that, quote, the Venezuelan government is purposely freeing inmates, including some convicted of murder, rape, and extortion. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. Again, we've seen this before. And it's a catastrophe. Again, during the Carter administration, Fidel Castro's government, the Cuban government, did the very same thing. 125,000 people came to Florida. A Sun Sentinel article from 1985 estimated that out of the 125,000 migrants who came at the time, 16 to 20,000 were criminals. The Miami District Director for Immigration called it an invasion. Quote, the boat list should never have been allowed to happen. At any other time, it would have been an act of war. And Bill Clinton, who was governor of Arkansas at the time, said exactly the same thing. But a lot has changed since 1985. No one in the federal government will admit what this is, which is an invasion. And of course, the media are totally for it because, hey, cheap housekeepers. So law enforcement authorities, rather than doing anything about the people invading our country, are talking about prosecuting Ron DeSantis. As we understand it, 48 migrants were uh, lured, I will use the word lured, uh, under false pretenses uh, into, into staying at a hotel for a couple of days, uh, they were taken by airplane. At a certain point, they were shuttled to an airplane uh, where they were flown to Florida and then eventually flown to Martha's Vineyard, again, under false pretenses is the, the information that we have, that they were promised work, they were promised the solution to several of their problems. We do have the names of some suspects involved that we believe are persons of interest in this case at this point. But I won't be parting with those names. Uh, I think, to be, to be fair, I think everybody on this call knows who those names are already, so I won't be naming any of them. That's appalling and shocking for any law enforcement official, a guy who carries a gun and has a right to shoot you, to be parroting Biden administration political talking points in front of a camera. That man should be ashamed. That is completely over the top that he would say something like this. This is all crazy. We're being invaded and now they're talking about prosecuting Ron DeSantis because he sent 50 people to Martha's Vineyard who immediately deported so they wouldn't get in the way of the Food and Wine Festival? True craziness. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.